Hey everyone, welcome back to Everything Tech, and today we're going to be installing Mac OS Sierra. Before we begin, I'd like to address the length of these videos. I know these videos are long, and that's mainly because I don't know the level of expertise that a certain person has watching these videos. But for the first time ever, I've decided to include skip times down below, so if there's a certain step in the process that you know how to do, you can look down below and see which, which step you need help with and skip right to it. I know mobile devices don't support skip times. And for those people that can't use skip times, you can use the skip times as a reference point to see where you want to stop scrubbing. And if you have any questions during the installation process, you can go ahead and comment down below any problems that you have. Either me or someone else will get to you. And with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Before we get started, you want to make sure you have a flash drive. And the flash drive has to be bigger than about 5 gigabytes in size, mainly because of the size of the operating system. So an 8 gigabyte flash drive will do. Also, SD cards will work just fine. I've used them in the past. But if you don't have a USB drive that is 8 gigabytes, you can look for one online. And of course, you can use a higher capacity if you want, although... I don't see why you would need a 32 gigabyte flash drive for, let's say, uh, an 8 gigabyte operating system. But you can use larger capacities if you want. I'm going to be using a 32 gigabyte flash drive for this video. But if you do not have a USB drive, you can find them on Amazon. I found this one here, an 8 gigabyte for around $7 with free shipping. And yeah, you can go ahead and get this online. Now, the next thing you are going to need is the operating system, which I've already downloaded right here. But to download it, you just want to go over to the Mac App Store. If you don't have it on your dock, you just want to do Command Space and then App Store. It should come out. Once in the App Store, you should see Mac OS Sierra on the front page. If you do not see it here, you may want to look right here at our favorite Mac apps. I think it should stay there for a really long time. But if nothing works, if it's not here or here, you can search for Sierra and it should come up. I will link this main page right here to the video down below so you can click on it it will take you directly to here if you don't want to spend time looking for it and you just want to download of course I've already downloaded this but before you, you install you want to look through it right here the list of different things that this operating system has to offer if certain things are things that you like for example Siri you can install it if not you may want to look at my other videos like El Capitan or Yosemite if those are operating systems you want to clean install. But the reason why I mentioned the larger than 5 gigabytes in size, mainly because right here it says that the operating system size is 4.77 gigabytes or 5 gigabytes rounded off. 8 gigabytes is more than enough, but I've, I've never seen a flash drive lower than 8 gigabytes in the past couple of years. They don't even sell 1 gigabyte anymore. Also, before you consider upgrading to Mac OS Sierra, you want to make sure that your computer is able to run Mac OS Sierra. And to do so, first we're going to go up to our little Apple here and click on About This Mac. And the things we have to take into consideration are the version operating system we're using. Of course, I'm using El Capitan 10.11.6. And I'm running it on iMac late 2012 with 8 gigs of RAM. Once you have that, you can go into this website, which I will link down below if you want to check to see if any of the features on here are supported by your computer. We scroll down and we see the basic requirements. You have an older version of OS X. You can click here to learn how to upgrade from an older, older version of Mac OS and you do meet at least two of these three requirements. Now these are the Mac hardware requirements. If your computer is not on here, it's possible you may not be able to run Mac OS Sierra. You also may want to check to see if any of these features on here that you may like are supported by your computer. Once you have those things ready and out of the way, you're ready to get started. Just plug in your USB drive to your computer and it should show up on your desktop right here. Here I have my USB flash drive with pictures on it and I have these pictures on here as a reference. Let me make this a little larger so we can see better. But these pictures are on here as a reference because I know people have pictures of things on their computer, on their flash drives, or they have programs, homework and stuff. You want to make sure you back up all of this stuff to a separate computer. Do not back it up to the computer you're going to be clean installing it on because it's just going to shoot you in the leg and you're going to lose everything. So make sure you back this up onto a hard drive. 
or another USB drive. And once you have that stuff backed up, you can go ahead and look for disk utility. The best way to look for disk utility is by doing command space and just searching disk utility. That command space brings up spotlight search, which is the quickest way to find any program on your computer. Once in disk utility, you want to locate your your flash drive or your SD card. Of course, here I have my hard drive plugged in. If you want to avoid losing any data, you just want to click on eject and to, to eject that hard drive so it doesn't get in the way later. That's what I'm going to be doing so I don't have to worry about it. Hopefully it does eject, but if it doesn't, oh well. But we're going to go on to the SD card here, which is the SanDisk Cruiser that I'm using. And we're just going to go ahead and click erase. When you do click erase, you can just leave it as untitled and just click on Mac OS Extended Journal and just leave this alone. But make sure it is named untitled because the code that we're going to be using for terminal will require that untitled name. So we click erase and it starts erasing and unmounting. So the process is complete. Here we have our, our USB drive here, untitled, and I'll show you why we need to name it untitled in just a second. So we're gonna go ahead and close this here. I'm gonna go ahead and close the app store because we don't need that anymore. And we're gonna go into Safari. We don't, we don't need to see the flash drives anymore, but instead we're gonna go to Macworld. Of course, this will be linked down below in the description. So if you need any help, this, these are all the steps here that you can use, but we're going to need this right here. This is the terminal command to create a bootable installer. And I believe terminal is the easiest way to do this, mainly because you don't have to pay for anything. It already comes included in your computer. So we're just gonna go ahead and highlight this code here, which I will paste down in the description as well. And we're gonna copy that. Let me copy it again, because I don't remember if I copied it right. Copy, there we go. I have short term memory, forgive me for that. But once we have that copied, you wanna do again, command space and bring up terminal. Once we have terminal here, you just wanna paste the code. Once you paste the code, press enter. When you press enter, it's gonna ask you for a password. Now that password is the one you use to unlock your computer. So when you log out of your computer and you log back in, that password you put in when you unlock your computer, that's the one you wanna use here. Once you do that, it's gonna say, ready to start. To continue, we need to erase the disk volume untitled. If you wish to continue, type yes or Y and then press return. This is why you need to name it untitled because it'll recognize untitled. We put yes and it starts erasing the disk, creating the disk and making the installer. Now this process here is gonna take a really long time so go ahead and make yourself a sandwich, take a nap or something. Hopefully when you wake up it's going to be ready. But you can see here it already created the installer, the install Mac OS Sierra, although it's not ready yet. Again, this process will take a really long time. You know that the process is complete once you see all this information here and it does say copy complete done and then it ends up saying your computer's name. That's how you know it's complete so you can go ahead and click out of that. And here is, we have the installer ready to go. Now if you're gonna be doing this on another computer, you may want to eject it and go to that computer before continuing on to step number two. But if you're going to be doing this on the same computer you made the installer on, you can just go ahead and continue on to step two. Step two will take place outside of the screen capture. I will have to film this on the camera, so please excuse my shaky camera if it is shaky. So we're gonna be clean installing Mac OS Sierra on my MacBook here, but before we get started, you wanna make sure you have the USB drive that you're gonna use with the installer on it. And also, if you're gonna be doing a laptop like me here, you wanna make sure you have a power cord, your power cord ready, because you don't know how long it's gonna to take to install Mac OS Sierra on your computer. So you wanna make sure you're connected to power, that way you don't encounter any problems. And once we're ready to get started, you just want to come over to your USB ports. This can be on any computer actually. Um, you do Because I'm doing this on my MacBook, I'm actually showing you where to plug it in. But just plug it into your, your USB port and you should see up at the top here, install Mac OS Sierra. Once you see that, you're good to go. Now what you're going to do next is go over to your Apple and then you're going to restart. Once you restart, before I actually can click restart, you want to have your finger ready on the option key because the option key is going to allow you to select what you want to boot from. So I'm going to go ahead and click on restart and have my finger ready. When you hear the chime, hit the option button.
Here you can see me pressing down on the option button after I heard the chime. And you can see here where are the different installers that are available. We can actually boot from the hard drive or boot from the Mac OS installer we made. So we're going to click on this here and click on the arrow. And then the little apple is going to come up. Once the installer boots and loads, this is the window you're going to be met with, Mac OS Utilities. Here we have Restore from Time Machine Backup if you have a Time Machine Backup you want to restore from. Directly install Mac OS, Get Help Online, and Disk Utility. We're going to be needing Disk Utility, so go ahead and click on that. And here is the Disk Utility window. And we're just going to go over to where it says Apple SSD. That's the only thing you have to be worried about. Don't worry about anything else, including Macintosh HD. This is just the Macintosh formatted uh, drive here, but we, we want to click on the SSD. Once there, you want to click Erase, and you can name it Macintosh HD. Here, let me just name it Macintosh HD. Macintosh HD. And you just want to leave everything as is. So we just click erase and it's going to start formatting the drive and it's going to take a while. Here we go, it's done. And it may take a while with you depending on how many things you had on your computer. And once that's done, you don't have to worry about any of these other disks. Just worry about this one right here. Don't touch any of these down here because your computer needs those. But once you have that done, just click on the X and click on install Mac OS then click continue. Here we are, the window that allows us to continue the installation of Mac OS Sierra. And we're just going to click on continue. It's going to ask you to agree to some terms and conditions. You just agree. And then agree once more. Then it's going to ask you what volume you want to install Mac OS Sierra on. You just want to click on Macintosh HD. So we're good. It's formatted. And this will take a while to install. So you want to make sure you have something to do in the time being because it will take a while the next step that you will ski will be when you actually have to do something because this is gonna take some time it's actually gonna install it and then finish installing and then restart a couple of times it's gonna take a while so just go ahead and relax make yourself a cup of coffee or whatever after it's done installing you will see this welcome screen here which allows you to select your region all you have to do is just click on your region and click continue of course I'm in the United States so that's what I'll be choosing Next, you're going to choose your keyboard. If your keyboard isn't displayed here, you can just click on Show All and pick your keyboard. Because I'm in the US again, the US keyboard is right there, so we click Continue. Next, we're going to select our Wi-Fi network, which of course I've blurred out for safety and privacy reasons. We're going to go ahead and put in our password. Once it's done connecting to the network, it's going to ask you if you want to transfer your information to this Mac. You can transfer from a Time Machine Backup or a Startup Disk, or you can transfer all your information from a Windows PC. I'm going to select Don't Transfer Anything Now because I want to have this installation clean. So we click Continue. You can choose to enable location services. This is if in case you lose your Mac and you use Find My Mac to locate it, or you can use the Maps feature and it will know where you are. So we're going to click on Continue. Next, we're going to sign in with our Apple ID. Of course, I have this blacked out for my own safety. Once we have our email and password entered, you can click Continue, but you can also opt out of not putting this at all just by clicking Don't Sign In. So we click Continue. In this next window, it's going to ask you to enter a verification code that gets sent to your phone number. I have this all blurred out for my own safety, but you will get this through text message. And this is only comes out if you have two-step verification enabled, which I do. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the password. Once you put in that password, it's going to check the authenticity of that code and once it checks out it'll give you the terms and conditions of which you can agree to and then click agree again and now it's gonna ask you to create your computer account you can choose your full name and then account name and then you can select your password you can select anything as your password and of course I like to select uh, allow my Apple ID to reset this password this is just in case I forget the password for whatever reason so now we're gonna click on continue Next, it's going to ask you to turn on File Vault Disk Encryption, which I always turn on. And I also allow my iCloud account to unlock my disk. This is just in case I forget my password. 
So we're going to click on continue and it's going to ask you if you want to store all of your files on the cloud. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to uncheck this, but if you want to store all your documents in the, on the desktop and in documents folders to iCloud automatically, you can select this. I, of course, use, use uh, OneDrive for all my storage, but I don't use iCloud. So next, we're going to send diagnostics usage and data to Apple. I don't really like doing this. You can choose it if you want, but I, I, don't, I don't send that in. So next, we click Continue, and first... And for the first time ever, we have Siri. And here you can enable Siri. If you don't want Siri, you can just check that right there. But I do want Siri, and that's it. It's setting up your Mac, and let me zoom out just a little bit so we can see the desktop once it shows up. And there you have it. There is Mac OS Sierra finished and installed. That's it for today. If you have any questions about the installation process or you have any problems during the installation, go ahead and comment down below. Either me or somebody else will get to you and help you. And if not, you can always contact me at any of my social media sites, which you can find on my YouTube main page. You'll find the links there. And please do consider subscribing or liking. If you like this video, share it with your friends. If you have any friends that need help with installing OSX Sierra or Mac OS Sierra. Also on my channel, you will find Mac, how to install Mac OS, El Capitan, and Yosemite in case those are videos you want to see. I will also link both of those videos down below if you're going to want to watch those videos or if you're interested in any of them. Again, thank you all for watching and see you all in the next video.